My name is Monica LaRue. I teach at Bell Place Middle School in Iberia District. The students in the video are seventh graders. I teach English language arts using the district approved LearnZillion curriculum. Today's lesson's objectives are to analyze the text conclusion, develop theories on the text conclusions, citing textual evidence to support, present text-based claims on a text conclusion, citing evidence to support those claims, and to evaluate peers' claims addressing whether the reasoning is sound and the textual evidence is relevant and sufficient to support the claims. Prior to this lesson, the students analyzed word connotations and the impact the change in setting has on Jonas from the giver. This analysis on the changing setting helped to understand Jonas's changing perspective, which prepares the students to analyze the text conclusion using Jonas's perspective to develop a sound opinion and claim. The overall goals of this LearnZillion unit, The Giver, is that by the end of this unit, the students will read dystopian literature and related informational texts to understand how individual perspectives are shaped by knowledge and memory and to determine whether perfection is worth the sacrifice. Today's lessons 29 and 30 from LearnZillion connect to the unit's overall goal by providing a dystopian novel, The Giver, for the students to analyze a character's perspective and how that perspective is changing because of knowledge and memory. Jonas's escape in the last chapter of The Giver shows the reader that he believes perfection is not worth the sacrifice. The students will develop claims on the text ending, citing evidence to support, using Jonas's perspective to help develop a sound claim. There are two students who have preferential seating, extended time, rephrase questions, repeat directions, and break assignments in parts. Both students are sitting in the front of class during whole group instruction. In small group instruction, I broke apart the lesson in chunks to accommodate these students. I gave more time than needed for each activity, and I walked around specifically going to their groups, rephrasing the t questions and directions for each activity to assess their understanding. Okay, so last lesson we had read chapters 21 and 22. Jonas had escaped the community. Why did he escape the community? Ethan? Uh, because him and the giver had come up with a plan because Jonas didn't really like the way the community was and he wanted to know what it was like to live elsewhere. But he had to leave early because of Gabriel's release. Very good, yes. Gabriel was going to be released, so he took Gabriel and they left the community. So when we left off in chapter 22, um, he, they were hiding from planes <clears throat> so they wouldn't be found, and it was almost a whole day when no planes had passed. So we're gonna, going to continue on chapter 23, page 219, the conclusion of the giver. Today we're going to read the conclusion of the giver, analyze Jonas and his perspective, we're also going to develop a claim for what you think will happen next after the end of the book, along with evidence. From the place he had left, he thought he heard music too. But perhaps it was only an echo. Okay, so that is the conclusion of The Giver. <clears throat> what I want you to do now is get into group A and share your reaction to the test's conclusion with your partner, answering these questions. What does Jonas experience at the end of the text? And what evidence supports your conclusion? Write it down in your binder. Into group A. So what the end tells you that? What the text tells you that? how do earlier scenes of the novel make this moment ambiguous? Someone tell me. He's, it's not a mystery because, like you said, Jonas, Jonas and um, Jonas and Gabe saw the memory. But when they saw the memory, he had another. That means if that was a memory, he in the in the story, he had, he said he had to see another memory to get to get sunlight and all to get heat. And I don't think he could lose uh, memory inside of the memory. 
So Gabe did not respond to this note, only Jonas did. Okay, so I'll go with what I have to say about that. Ooh. From this text, it said, like, when it was, when it was, all, when it was getting to the um, cold spot, they had to use their memories to get cold, but then the memories got to get worn away from, because he was getting farther on from the community. Well, they said that him and Gabe was getting cold, and he had to use memories to get him and Gabe to get warmer again. Okay, very good. Okay, so we do have a few different opinions about this meaning and how it is ambiguous. There could be different meanings, and we see how different people feel about that. Now what I want you to do is answer question four on your split page notes on page 76. So make a guess of what happens to Jonas and the community at the end of the text. Make sure you cite evidence that supports that guess. Okay, so he's talking about the music that he hears, okay? So you think maybe because it's out of your watch right now? So do you think it made it to the community? Yeah, probably because Okay. Yeah. Like he was dreaming, but he was silly. Okay. Next, we're going to put all those theories into place, into action. We're going to develop a, a claim about the text conclusion. You're going to state what happens at the end of the text, and you're going to find evidence that proves it. And then we will do a gallery walk to um, evaluate those claims to see if they're correct or incorrect, if you agree with it or not. So what I want you to do now is get into group B and the materials manager from each group, grab your materials. He was on a sled, and he felt it going faster and faster. On page 77, it asks what the claim is, then it asks what the evidence, and does the evidence support that claim? So, we're going to conduct a gallery walk. You're going to move in a clockwise rotation. And when you get to the new group's claim, you're going to discuss it as a group and then write it down on your paper. The main thing is, is to find that claim and to discuss with your group if that evidence supports that claim and why or why not it supports it. Wait, wait, wait. Dude, they, they, the giver didn't ever, the giver asked somebody, it says that he has a
So why did Lois Lowry choose to make the ending of the text ambiguous? Why do you think? And how does this impact the meaning you are taking from the novel? I'm going to give you five minutes. I'm, I'm trying to find out if it's too to too be continuing in any other book. That's what I'm trying to do. That's why I'm If it is too to be continuing, I'm going to be there. Down by blue, 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 I'm going to be there. So today, in this class, we'll be discussing the conclusion of the giver. We developed and presented text-based claims about the conclusion of the giver and evaluate those claims of your peers and the extent to which they were supported by relevant evidence. When I was going on, a lot of you were really um, verbal about if it was right or wrong, and you had um, great opinions about their claims and their evidence. For um, the end of the class, you're going to complete an exit ticket on this paper. You're going to choose one out of three choices on how to explain what you think will happen next after the end of the book, The Giver. Now, you have a lot of claims on the wall that kind of give you ideas. If you already didn't have your own idea of what would happen next, so you can use that. Or if you have another idea of mine. So you're going to choose one of them. The first one, you're going to write an essay. Describing what will happen next, citing textual evidence from chapter 23 that supports the next theme. Number two, write a narrative, a story, describing what happens next using the same tone, point of view, and using all elements of a narrative. Or you can choose number three, you're going to create a storybook slideshow, sort of like a comic, using pictures with colors and dialogue showing what happens next. Tomorrow we're going to read a short dystopian novel called Harrison Bergeron, and we will be using that story to compare and contrast it to the giver dystopian novel. The lesson objectives on analyzing a text conclusion, developing a claim, citing evidence, and evaluating peers' claims were met. For each activity, I went to each group and assessed their understanding of the assignment. I made sure to ask each student his or her thoughts and understanding on that particular assignment. Not only did I assess in small group setting, I assessed in large group setting, allowing the students to debate their reasons for their claims and evidence. The claims and evidence were assessed during a gallery walk. The students evaluated each group's claims and evidence during the gallery walk. I monitored and asked each group why they agreed or disagreed with the claim and evidence. I would do one thing differently next time. I would have the students write down their reflection of the text ending with supporting textual evidence before they get into their partner group to discuss the reaction to the ending. I found the students were still processing and did not have enough time to fully respond to the text ending. I believe this independent reflection will give the students more to discuss in the partner group. After this lesson, I will give feedback on the exit ticket and have a few students share their responses to the exit ticket. We will then begin Lesson 31 in the LearnZillion unit. The students will read the dystopian short story Harrison Bergeron, determine the meaning of unknown words, and write a summary of Harrison Bergeron.